Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so I welcome you to the second live session of the course title uh, Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So in the first live session we had a very productive discussion and uh, students were uh, very enthusiastically participating and they were asking a lot of questions and we tried to answer as much as possible. However, maybe we could not answer all the queries. So this session is uh, open for all of you. Uh, if you want, you can ask questions and we'll uh, try to see how much we can cover in this session. So, so before uh, I get any questions here, so some of the questions even in the last session also I could not discuss and a few more questions uh, we also have here today also with us so Sarah Khan asked uh, why teenagers get more stress than the older people so Sarah uh, basically uh, stress is not specific to any particular age group you know a teenager has their own uh, problems even older people has their own problems probably it seems more <coughs> visible or it may be more pronounced in certain age group particularly teenage teenage group primarily because you know this is the time where you no know, everything is kind of in a flux situations uh, you have so many dreams and you are yet to kind of settle down uh, you yet to decide what careers what are the pathways you need to you know you need to take so there are so many you know kind of your mind is mostly in the flux kind of situation during the teenage uh, because things are kind of changing you know and this changing phase is always kind of difficult in many sense because you are still not cocooned by the security of getting settled down and also there are many biological changes which may also you know influence your moods and you know and as well as your emotions so because of all this probably you know it is more pronounced uh, in certain age groups such as teenage group where you know you are still your mind is yet to settle down and become more kind of uh, structured uh, so obviously there will be issues and slowly slowly we learn this is how as we progress in our age uh, we learn things we, we develop schemas and mindset and uh, as we grow older uh, we learn so many things and then also we we'll kind of get better, better prepared you know for different problems of life as we get older so in teenage we just starting to understand world and things and probably we are not fully prepared also uh, so that is why probably uh, dealing with the stress and coping with the stress becomes more difficult during the teenage as compared to old age having said that it doesn't mean that you know uh, in the old days there are no stress or anything every age group has their own problems uh, and life may bring a lot of challenges at every uh, every age group so it is not uh, stress is not specific to any particular age group so I hope it will uh, at least you know to some extent able to answer your questions and obviously <clears throat> about managing stress and uh, different aspect of stress this course is all about that only and we have already talked about so many aspect of stress till now and obviously we'll be talking about more also in the future lectures uh, and coping we have already started in the last week and in the coping also we have discussed how to deal with a lot of stress you know whenever we face or encounter various stressful situations of our life uh, so this course is all about that so it also kind of prepares your mindset um, and kind of you become better prepared so that in future if certain stressful situation and the problematic or traumatic situation comes to your life uh, you will be better prepared to handle those so this course is actually uh, all about that also uh, so I hope this will also answer some of your queries at least 
सो फ्यू कॉमेंट्स हैव स्टार्टेड कमिंग सो चवन इज से गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून चवन सो शौकत शफी इज आस्किंग नो ही इज बेसिकली कॉमेंटिंग ऑन द कोर्स से वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव कोर्स एंड एनहांस इज माई नॉलेज थैंक यू शौकत आई एम हैप्पी दैट इट इज हेल्पिंग यू uh another question that was posted in the google link is about stress relief uh, i don't know what this question is there it is not very specifically mentioned what the student what the student is primarily you know asking this question but i am trying probably the question is about how to kind of deal with the stress this is the question probably uh so this question is uh, asked by uh, mandala srinivas so srinivas uh, Uh, uh as i already said no this course of the first part of this course which we are already almost covered now is about understanding stress and how to deal with the stress uh so stress relief part has been elaborately discussed in the uh, module uh, i think 4 5 module is all about stress relief and understanding coping strategies understanding what is adaptive coping what is maladaptive coping and in that context you know what are the adaptive or constructive coping that we can use in our day to day life to deal with the stress all these things are already are discussed elaborately in the course you know we have hours and hours of lecture on that so i i will i would suggest you that you go through at least some of the video lectures don't just uh, focus on your lecture notes uh, lecture notes are okay it will just summarize some of the important technical knowledge it will be helpful for assignment and probably giving exam but if you really want to understand the diverse aspect about a topic i would urge you to uh, look at the video lectures because you know it is in the lectures i i have i you know explained in detail about each topics which you will not find every aspect of it in the lecture notes uh, so on obviously i also understand that lecture uh, lectures are little bit lengthy because probably one hour each lectures and some lectures are little less uh but still you can you no know, kind of split it in you no know, uh, probably today you can see a half an hour lecture and next day probably you see the remaining the remaining part so you can make this kind of strategies in order to you know um, understand what these lectures are all about so i would suggest if you want to understand elaborately about each of this topic please go to the video lectures uh some questions have started coming up Oh, uh, Malaya Mamta is asking. Uh, I am in depression. I eat food. If I take tablets, please suggest how to eat without tablets. Uh, Malaya, I am not exactly getting what you are trying to ask here. Uh, is it uh, because of the depression you are eating more? I eat food. If I take tablets, so if you take depression. Dep- depression related tablet then you your tendency to eat more uh, uh, is it about that so mala anyway um, this regarding tablets and other thing obviously this uh, it is primarily given by psychiatrists and the people from the medical background uh sometimes some of there may be some side effects of these tablets i i don't know much details about this medical part because i'm not an expert in the medical part so i cannot really you know discuss about this part uh, uh but probably you know about depression about emotional issues some of the lectures we tried to address some of the major issues and how to deal with it. at least probably it may not completely eradicate if it is a kind of clinical depression or something but uh, some of the coping strategies that we have discussed will definitely help you to manage your emotional issues you know such as even depression also so probably slowly slowly you will learn to become more independent from that medications and other part so that that is the best thing that you can do you know Uh, remaining uh, dependent on the medication for the rest of your life may not be a very good thing but i cannot give any specific suggestion about these things because it is probably given by a medical professional uh, but uh, in terms of psychological uh, aspects uh, you can always you know look at some of these coping strategies that we have discussed uh, that they will definitely help you to manage your emotions including depression also probably they may help you uh, at least uh, dealing with some aspect of it 
uh, Radhika is asking hello sir uh, thank you so much for creating such a technical yet simple to understand valuable codes thank you Radhika I'm happy that at least you could understand uh, the content of this course sir what will be the difference of therapy and this course in managing anxiety what will be the difference of therapy and this course in managing anxiety uh, see Radhika therapy some of the principles of therapies are also discussed in this course uh, this course is not specifically uh, no, you know it is not about you know after attending this course you will become a counselor or therapist it is not like that uh, but this course is the focus is understanding the how our minds create stress and how it influences your body and creates different physical diseases and how can we deal with those stress and the problems and the emotional issues of your life as well as we are also talking about happiness mental health on those kind of well-being some positive dimensions of human behavior all these things are also we are talking about it in this particular course so this is kind of broader understanding about your well-being uh, and certain the negative aspects of our functionings and mental processes and the mind body connections so that we understand all these mechanics and we so that we can better deal with our own problems you know rather than becoming dependent on other aspects so if you understand that mechanics and dynamics of your mind you will be better equipped to deal with your own emotional issues and the problems of life so that is the whole idea so it will not kind of make you a therapist or a counselor that is not the idea of this course but some principles some of the principles that are used some of the techniques that are used in various therapies are definitely discussed in this course uh, I hope uh, okay what is uh, Suman is asking what is Albert Ellis views on grief due to that people who have lost their loved one can they be helped by RBT See, Albert Ellis has really done a great contribution in terms of psychotherapy, in terms of, you know, kind of immediately tackling human mind. So his uh, principles of therapies can be used in different problems, including grief and other things. So as we have already, you, you, if you have gone through the lecture of where we have discussed the mental ways of coping, primarily we have discussed Albert Ellis theories, uh, which basically, you know, is explained using ABC theory. But the basic idea is that it is not the events, outside event that causes emotional problems. However, something between events and the consequences which is called B, which is called beliefs, how you think about those events, that creates all the emotional problems. So I have elaborately discussed that model in the uh, mental ways of coping uh, lecture. And uh, this strategy is very helpful and it is one of the most dominant and most popular kind of therapies nowadays used called cognitive therapy where you know uh, the problem because it's mostly at the mental level so the solutions are also uh, given at the mental level so if mind is creating problem it is we need to find solution at the mental level so if mind is thinking in the wrong ways we can always correct it so that is the whole idea so because you know everything is mental mental you know whatever experiences that we have it is all created by our mind only whether you are happy, whether you are sad, everything is your mind game. So the solution has to be kind of uh, found at the mental level. So that is the whole idea of Albert Ellis theory. And his one of the basic idea is that, you know, uh, it is, uh, you know, emotions and my um, uh, thought processes are directly uh, connected to each other. So the kind of emotions that you have automatically you will have that kind of thought and the vice versa. The, uh, the kind of thoughts processes that you have, it will similar kind of emotions will also be there. So the way you think, the way you feel. So that is the whole idea of Albert Ellis, you know. So if you feel in uh, your thoughts are very depressive or negative, automatically the emotions will be also very negative and de depression is bound to come. Similarly, you know, negative emotions may stimulate negative thought processes. So the address has to be, uh, you know, we need to address at the mental level. So that is the whole idea of Albert Ellis theory. So we can use that idea for solving all kinds of problem at least to some extent including grief and other things uh, so i hope uh, this will be helpful and go to the lecture which which is titled as mental ways of coping i have elaborately explained about this model and uh, definitely it will help you in various situations of your life
Jyoti is asking good afternoon uh, sorry uh, Debashis Das is asking good afternoon sir good afternoon Debashis uh, very informative discussion sir my question is that how to know someone is suffering from stress especially uh, the students uh, see Debashis there are certain symptoms that you can uh, you can uh, it can be very visible you know I don't have to give you a lecture on that Whenever you yourself experience stress, there are certain symptoms, you know, there can be some physiological symptoms, some mental symptoms, you know, uh, stress, uh, the symptoms of stress and anxiety are also very similar, you know, so there will be some kind of, you know, uh, at the behavioral level, maybe, you know, lack of sleep, you know, um, you know, there will be issues in the f food intake, probably some people take more food, some people take less food when they're stressed, you know, there will be anxieties and worries. Uh, there may be uh, you know even physiological symptoms your heartbeat may increase uh, there may be you know so many other physiological symptoms that we have discussed elaborately so there are some generalized symptoms we all know because you yourself when you go through stress you know you know you go through certain symptom at the mental level you experience something some worry some you know some uh, certain disturbances irritability all these kinds of things will be there at the mental level, at the physiological level, there may be heartbeat may rise and there will be, you know, kind of uh, some people also sweating and those kind of things may happen. So mental ex mental symptoms, physiological symptoms, behavioral symptoms, you know, some people become aggressive, some people become, you know, fearful and they start uh, kind of running away f from the people. So all these things can be there. Uh, so whatever you yourself experience uh, symptom you experience during stressful experience other people also almost similar kind of symptoms will be experienced by them uh, so certain things as we have already discussed anxiety stress fear symptoms apparently looks very similar you know but obviously stress mostly occurs at the whenever there is a specific situation for example you know uh, you need to appear for examination now examination before going examination you may be feel stressed because there is a specific stimulus anxiety on the other hand is more non-specific you know generalized worries about apprehension about future what will happen so those kind of things will be there but symptoms are very similar uh, Jyoti is asking good afternoon sir uh, we are not able to download and print notes of week four five six please suggest how can we take print notes Jyoti I don't know what is the problem but uh, for every module I have already uh, you know uploaded uh, the PDF files of lecture notes uh, every uh, every lectures PDF notes are already uploaded you can just click and download that uh, I don't know what is the issue oh, probably you try to uh, see whether you know pdf adobe reader and those kind of if there are some software related issues in your computer or system so try to download it from other system and see probably sometimes you know it is uh, some software related issues that you are not able to upload uh, but for all lectures it should be you know you should be able to upload because you know these are pdf files uh, i tried it also and these are there is no issue uh, but still uh, try to see if there are issues you can write uh, me also uh, if you are not able to download you can personally write my write to my email id also <laughs> okay Siva is asking sir sometimes I lose my patience when I fail to prove my point with my project team I fear it might slowly lead to disturbance in the team what should I do in order to keep team together uh, uh, Siva, um, uh, losing patience, obviously, I mean, um, it, everybody may lose their patience sometimes or other, you know, there is a level of tolerance for everybody. I mean, no one can kind of indefinitely tolerate something. So losing patience is something everybody does. I think it should, you should not be worried about that as a, as a kind of problem. But if you lose your patience very often without any apparent reason, then probably, and uh, I mean, uh, you need to work little bit on your emotion regulation uh, so I don't know actually your details and other thing without that I will not be able to talk about your uh, you know, case what is actually there uh, when you fail to prove your point because if you are working in a team one quality that is very important you know to be a leader or a team leader 
you know you are not alone and uh, you need to work with other people so certain mindsets are very important to succeed in a team one thing is probably patience is also very important apart from your communication skills and you know and um, understanding others perspective you know so you may have your own point of view and you are trying to you know, communicate that point of view but it is not necessary that others will take your point automatically you know uh, we should not take people for granted you know everybody has their own opinions and they may not agree with you so we should understand when you are in a team situation you should not always kind of pose your point should be the best point or the right point uh, if you are right you can argue always make argument that okay why i am right you know that is okay but you should not lose patience and become angry that why others are not listening you know but then probably others will lose faith in you and you will not be able to work as a you know effective team player so just understand that when you whenever you are in team situation you should be more patient more empathetic with the idea that you should also understand others perspective because it is not about you only it is about team performance so collectively as a team how you what is your output what you are trying to give that is more important rather than your own thing you know if you become too self centered uh, you will not be able to become a good team player you know so that is also a good characteristics of leader also leader should be empathetic and try to understand the perspective of other people then only they will be able to give better solution so when you are in a team situation you know learn to keep yourself little bit aside also your own self interest and your point don't think that i should be always right learn from others also try to accept see from others perspective and uh, whenever you think that others are giving better solution accept it and this is how you know, people will be happy about it when you always try to prove yourself as right people will get irritated by your presence so understand that you know when you are playing in a team emotion regulation is very important your own many sometimes you may be angry but try to regulate that and some of the content of this lecture will be very helpful in dealing with that also uh, so in a, in, a, in a team uh, you need to really you know become you know understanding about the other perspective is very important and not just your own song you should not just play all the time uh, it will help you to kind of you know act as a better team player uh mamta is asking uh, sir certificates provided at the end of this course uh, is it helpful in future career enhancement like i am i eligible for masters or phd course after completing um mamta uh, certificates uh, definitely can be helpful there is no doubt about it uh, but it is not like you know certificate is not like master certificate or it is not like you know ba certificate this is just a course that you have taken sometimes some universities and uh, some uh, institutes they also provide credits for this nptel uh, mooc course where you know you can take these courses and they will give you some credit like three credits or four credits or something like that uh, so in that case also there are certain benefits uh, for some professionals also in certain organization you know having this kind of course certificate also can be additional you know, give you additional advantage to your cv also Uh, but don't think it is like equivalent to a masters program or something like that this is just a course not a program you know so just remember that uh, remaining thing obviously it will be an added advantage to your cv that you have done these courses and the most important this is don't think about it in terms of uh, you know advantage in your professional life uh, this course is primarily designed for your own health you know for your own life this will be the most important i think uh, beneficial all the contents of this course Uh, so more, more than professional probably it is more helpful for your own life uh, you will understand more about your own dynamics of mind and how it functions how can you at least you know get a better experience of life in terms of emotions and other things so the course is mostly designed taking point of view of how to make your life the quality of your life better if it helps in professional form that is better obviously you know that is an kind of icing in the cake uh prasanjit uh, is saying sir i have missed 3 uh, week quiz can i sit for exam 
uh so i think as per criteria what i have understood is that you know you uh, the in the final exam in a 12 week course uh, you have to uh, the eight best assignment or assignment marks is added to your final exam eight out of 12 theek okay? hai so if you can appear at least to the eight eight weeks assignment i think that should serve your purpose Uh, so you have missed three weeks. Still, I think you have op opportunity. I mean, still you have the chance. So if you can even attend to eight assignment, that should serve some purpose. So eight assignment out of twelve is added in the final mark. Madhuri is asking, sir, where I find your email ID? You just. Uh, write my name in the google and write iitg you will it will be it will direct to my web page where you can find it uh, lakshmi sagar is asking what are the effective rehabilitation techniques to come out of depression again this is a very complex question uh, depression uh, you know there are Sort different categories of depression. You know, some depression is about clinical depression, where you you may need support of uh, psychiatrist or medical professional and some medication. Uh, there may be some mild depression, which are mostly about sadness and other thing. Uh, in those cases, obviously, all these strategies and coping techniques that I have discussed in this course, uh, they are all helpful. Uh, all these things can actually help you to come out of depression because depression is about some kind of issues with your emotional problems particularly you lose interest in life you become extremely sad and mostly pessimistic thoughts are you know the primarily you know it comes to your mind sometimes it may have some genetic and biological reasons so i know in extreme cases uh, some medication may be required but in other cases mostly using you know some therapies some use techniques that i have discussed because there are many uh, ways to deal with it so i cannot address it here it will take a lot of time so that is why you know please go through those video lectures uh, where you know i have discussed coping strategies all this will be actually help you to deal with stress depression all the emotional issues actually so these are broad things that i have discussed here uh jos fine jos uh, is asking sir is there any generally accepted standardized tool for assessment of psychological well being uh maybe to measure how a person is doing in relation to parma model there are uh, jos there are many uh, standardized tools available for measuring uh psychological well being you know and again well being has different dimensions so for hedonic well being which is about you know emotions and life satisfaction uh there are separate uh, no standardized questionnaires available at dinner and other have developed uh, very popular uh, no questionnaires which are used for you dynamic which is about meaning in life relationship and those kind of self actualization there are separate instruments available for parma also there is a uh, standardized uh, tool available for measuring well being from the perspective of parma model uh, in fact it is freely available if you search it in the, the google you will find it so there are different uh, assessment tools available depending on certain perspective because well being has different perspective so there are uh, different tools available from the different perspectives also siva kumar uh, is asking thank you so much sir what you said is so true sir i will try to regulate myself and see my teammates perspective from today thank you siva i think uh, you try it we should try it it uh, definitely it can be helpful without trying we will not be able to you know see whether it is working or not so uh we still have some time so uh, <clears throat> um so some questions are already posted in the google link uh, one question is about when will i pay exam fee for exam i think there is in the announcement section if you go in the announcement section uh, in the beginning i think there was an announcement about exam 
so in that link all the details are given uh, so please visit the announcement section and somewhere in the beginning you know there was a post about exam uh, there you can kind of find out you know the details of exam and fees and the deadlines and all these things i don't remember exactly the time so i cannot uh, tell you about those things at this moment um jayesh said you know what it was kind of posted in the uh, google link uh, what to do or do to stay always fit and mentally strong boost confidence again these are multi dimension this this questions are very uh, multi dimensional questions i cannot give you a very simple one answer uh, to satisfy everybody's you know queries on this uh, primarily because you know this is not just one thing human beings are very complex and most of the time we need to address their problems and uh, kind of effective tool to improve any psychological aspect we need to look at that person as an individual because every individuals are very different uh, so most of the time and i mean the solution also needs to be tailored according to the need of that person sometimes you know generalized solution can be given but it may not be working for everybody uh, so the questions like how to remain mentally strong and fit and those things there are many things to it and some of the things that we are discussing in the course definitely they are also part of it you know um, so for example we have talked about a concept called psychological hardiness uh, which is about mentally strong you know so if 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 you go to that lecture uh, it, this lecture is titled about you know uh, some you know factors that influence stress stress tolerance so one of the characteristics that makes people mentally strong is called psychological hardiness and i have discussed the characteristics of this particular trait so please uh, uh, listen to that lecture Uh, which talks about you know few characteristics and psych how to become psychologically hardy and it is not just about that also even all the things ability to cope regulate your emotions uh, no everything will make you mentally strong you know so it is not just one thing you have to address your emotion you have to address your thoughts uh, you have to address you know uh, the issues and other problems whatever it is so these are multi dimensional question it is difficult to give a simple answer uh, but a um, lot of things that we are discussing will kind of help you to even you know deal with your emotions and mind and ultimately they will help you to at least make you mentally healthy because mental health is also a very important part of this course and um, all the most many of the upcoming lectures will be about mental health and well being you know so all this thing will uh, help you to understand more about all these dimensions uh so i think that will also help you <clears throat> mm. uh um uh, murli prasad uh, is asking normally i am very cool person uh, but at times even for a small reasons i get anxiety uh, become emotional and take decisions on issues even they are detrimental to me uh, will you please suggest some tools sir uh, again uh, uh murli uh, murli dar prasad so anxiety is again again you know some people are more prone to anxiety i mean we all get anxious about whenever there are some issues and some we expect some future issues anxiety is a common thing we all experience anxiety uh, but some people uh, are more prone to anxiety uh, it is possible uh, that you know there are individual differences some people very little things some problems and little issues in their life and then anxiety is triggered very easily so that can uh, happen sometimes so that is you should not worry about it only thing is that you learn to manage your anxiety you know see when in this whole course the whole approach of this course is that what we're saying is that you know stress is not a problem anxiety is not a problem all these emotional issues are not problem as long as you are able to manage it you know because these are part of our everyday life we cannot remove them you cannot remove stress or anxiety from your life uh, only thing is that you know as a if if you want to lead a more effective and you know more functioning person uh, we need to know how to handle it that is the only thing that we need to understand we should, we cannot remove it and we should not try to remove it completely that is not going to happen uh, so sometimes uh, this anxiety may be triggered for some person trigger is very you know small things little bit of issues and things will trigger your anxiety uh, 
uh, this can happen for some people uh, triggers are different uh, so for you probably it is some small reason whatever it is little bit of rejection or whatever it is it triggers your anxiety probably and you take uh, anxiety because when you are under the influence of anxiety your emotion is at the forefront so you are becoming more emotional uh, your rational thought processes may not be that prominent at that time and uh, when emotion become dominant uh, probably dealing with or thinking rationally becomes more difficult because you know emotion has more power in terms of influencing our mind uh, so it is very natural that if you become very emotional and you take decision at that time your decision will be based on those emotions may not be based on the rational thought processes so later you may regret simply because you know you are not thinking straight at that time your decision was completely based on uh, your the influence of the emotion so that is bound to happen and it is very common for every human beings whenever anybody takes a decision under the influence of emotions many time later we regret simply because at that time our th rational thought processes were not really you know we are not giving importance to that part because of the overpowering nature of the emotions so that may happen uh, that is very natural and it happens for a lot of people um, so learn to manage it a little bit more you can do uh, certain meditation techniques mindfulness techniques that we have discussed uh, even you know some breathing techniques you can do so that that they, they go very deeper uh, into your system and you know, because anxiety and is not just at the mental level many time it goes into your system physiological system in your body also so it triggers automatically you know you cannot do anything about it so slowly slowly you need to address it at little bit deeper level also so certain meditation techniques mindfulness techniques some deep breathing techniques all these will help you to calm down your physiology also so at that deeper level you can manage your emotions uh, they will really help you uh, slowly slowly so don't think overnight things will change you need to be motivated and put effort in that direction so learn few of these things some of the lectures we have addressed all these things they will be very helpful <clears throat> so lakshmi sagar is asking uh, how question paper will be framed it will be based on assignment what we do so the final exam will be based on uh, will be mcq type so multiple choice just like assignment questions uh, uh, so there will be i think 100 questions and uh, 3 hours time probably yeah 100 questions 3 hours time so questions will be very similar in the pattern of assignment so some question may be you know based on your understanding also not just assignment you know uh, so some questions will be lot of adi many additional questions not so don't think all the questions will come from assignment um, uh, many additional uh, questions which are not in the assignment will also come especially some understanding based question will be there siva rama krishna is asking uh, sir if everyone's questions are answered please share any one experience uh, where you dealt with uh, stress uh sivaram stress stress is something that we all every day face i mean uh, including me also uh, no one can claim that they don't face stress any time i also face almost on a daily basis uh, so some of the things for example i said i try to uh, i you know some of the techniques particularly i do try to every day many do some of the meditation techniques so that personally is very helpful for me and obviously at the mental level you know certain understanding also develops and uh, you know slowly slowly you learn to inculcate all this understanding in your mindset and all this mindset you know kinds of helps you initially you know so they become you know part of your mindset so all this understanding slowly slowly becomes helpful in dealing with the problems of life including stress and other thing uh, but uh, for some people some specific things can be very helpful so for example uh, for me certain uh, meditation techniques are really helping me uh, they kind of kind of you know you know overall some reorientation of your system happens so those things can be very helpful you can also find out your own things uh, they can be also helpful uh 
Rajnikanth is asking happiness in life can be only considered for hedonic well being or is it also including eudaimonic well being? Uh, Rajnikanth, uh, basically, you know, if you have uh, gone through the lecture that I have you know, posted about the well being, uh, so well being is primarily, you know, holistic way if you look at the well being, it is actually the combination of both hedonic as well as eudaimonic. These are two dimensions of well being. So hedonic well-being is also important. Eudaimonic well-being is also important. Uh, each of them, they give you some partial uh, look at it, some partial views of well-being. Uh, they have their own benefits, but uh, you know, if you look at the holistic ways of well-being, uh, it should include both hedonic as well as eudaimonic well-being. For example, we have, we have discussed certain model like PRMA Parma model, which talks about well-being as a combination of both hedonic as well as eudaimonic well-being. So the idea of well-being is that it is both. Hedonic is one aspect, eudaimonic is another aspect. Uh, Madhuri is asking, sir, uh, there is negative marking in exam. I don't think no. Is is there any negative marking? Uh, so as of now, I am not sure about it, so I cannot give you a definite answer. Uh, but if if there is a negative marking, it will be informed to you. Uh, Pritham is asking, is the final exam of this course taking online or offline on university perspective? I think uh, the final exam will be, I mean, the f mode will be online, but it will be proctored kind of exam. You have to go to a particular location and it will be proctored exam. But the mode will be online only. So you have to kind of uh, answer in the computer system only but you will have to go to certain places or certain centers that will be allocated to you. Do we have time? Okay. Okay, so, so some of the other questions that were already posted earlier. Uh, one question is about physiology. I mean, so question when you post a question please write specifically what is your question I mean, physiology is a word you know i cannot uh, answer you based on a word so what you are trying to what is your question about physiology are you asking about the kind of uh, kind of some uh, impact of stress on physiology or something like that so please ask more specific questions rather than just uh, one word or something. So another question that was posted is uh, what is the central role to offer a free course for the students? So this, these are the courses basically you know provided by MHRT with the idea that you know um, people uh, only not from very specific institute they get the opportunity to do some courses so that it is such courses are made freely available to anybody with internet access you know so that everybody gets this opportunity that is why these are called massive online courses so this is the mhrd's program so they are doing it sir please suggest some books on counseling uh, some counseling, uh, um, uh, there are uh, certain specific uh, books available. So at this moment, you know, uh, what I can say you, you know, few, one, two or three books are already given in the, this one, whatever it is called as, you know, in your content of the course. If you see, there are some uh, books are there. So these books are not directly related to counseling, but you know, a lot of these uh, principles of counseling uh, are available in those books also. Apart from that, you know, if you uh, if you want uh, some specific books on counseling, uh, I can post some of these books uh, in the uh, in the you know in the, you know ask a question section also. So probably if you are interested, you can you know uh, note that. Okay. So I'll be I I will post a few books if you want, or you can personally write to me also if you are interested in specifically to counseling. You know, because counseling is mostly about uh, you know about you know counseling is not just about just about mental health problems it is also about career counseling there are so many dimensions to counseling so there are so many books available depending on the different areas of counseling 
uh, so psychological uh, disorders is one aspect of the counseling so you what is your interest you just, if you can write a little bit more about it probably some of the books related to that i can uh, i can send you so probably you can write me an email saying what kind of content you are interested in based on that i can suggest you some books so uh, one question was about physiology probably i think uh, in the in the last session also there was a kind of question on physiology uh, so probably i could not address so uh, there was one lecture lecture uh, i think third lecture of this course is about the biology of stress if you if you look at uh, that lecture no where i have discussed in detail uh, because stress has a very strong biological aspect uh, so mental experience obviously at the mental level you experience stress but it has a very strong influence in your body so that is why you know, the biological aspect of the uh, s stress is uh, kind of you know uh, that was given a lot of emphasis almost one lecture was devoted to that so the idea was obviously you know uh, there was various one major aspect of biological aspect of stress is that you know uh, it was mostly whenever we experience stress particular the chronic stress it kind of influences certain glands of your body and they ultimately releases you know Mm, you know certain hormones in your blood bloodstream and those hormones does all the impact you know whether whether you are kind of your heartbeat increases or whether you know uh, cholesterol level increases whether your blood pressure increases all this impact that is done in the system are primarily done through those hormone release of those hormones so uh, so if you see you know uh, there were two pathways that i that i have discussed in that lecture one is called as you know sympathetic adrenaline medullary pathways where whenever you experience stress one part of your brain called hypothalamus is a very small organ in the brain in, in the center of the brain that gets stimulated and this hypothalamus then stimulates two pathways one pathway is that it stimulates your autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is that nervous system which basically you know you know uh, is not in your control you know for example heartbeat you are not controlling your heartbeat uh, but something is controlling and that is autonomic nervous system for example your uh, your uh, you know perspirations or sweating these are not controlled by you so it, so these are uh, you know kind of influenced by your autonomic nervous system so hypothalamus in one way it influences or it stimulates the autonomic nervous system particularly called sympathetic part of nervous system and it stimulates your body suddenly you become irritated or you know kind of lot of energy comes to you it is more like fight or flight response whenever there is a danger you know automatically body gets a lot of irritations a lot of energy and you are kind of kind of body is prepared to fight or kind of run away so those symptoms are basically done by your autonomic nervous system sympathetic part of autonomic nervous system and another aspect that it does is that you know this sympathetic part of nervous system also stimulates uh, kind of you know uh, there is a gland called adrenal gland near your kidney and it stimulates the inner part of that gland adrenal gland and it releases certain hormones like epinephrine norepinephrine and those uh, does a lot of kind of functions all these functions of kind of giving extra energy to you whenever there is a danger or stress and so this is one pathway another pathway is that hypothalamus stimulates pituitary gland another gland in your brain which is called as kind of master gland it controls all the other gland and this pituitary gland actually uh, releases a hormone called acth adrenocorticotropic hormone so this uh, hormones actually again stimulates your adrenal gland but this time it uh, stimulates the cortex on so the outer layer of that gland autonomic nervous system stimulates the inner part of that gland acth stimulates the outer part of that gland and it remove it it kind of releases a hormone called as cortisol and it is little bit slow system so whenever your stress is remaining for us sometime let's say half an hour or something then cortisol will be released 
and this cortisol uh, you know when it is released excessively for a long time uh, this causes a lot of problems including heart diseases increasing of the cholesterol level uh, decrease of the immune system and all these negative functions are primarily done by this cortisol so uh, at the physiological level so this is kind of summary of what uh, what how stress influences your body apart from that influences your certain brain part also so we'll, we have discussed all these things in detail in that lecture so please go to that so pritam is again asking sir due to this covid pandemic i think it may not be possible to take exam in specific area and attempt exam in computer so will it be possible to take exam online at home just for safety purpose i don't think so because this is actually organized by you know nptel uh whether it is allowed or not i think probably in the due course of time uh, you can ask uh, but i think it is mostly proctored exam it will not be allowed from home so because this is not in my control it is organized by nptel and overall it is managed by mhrt so all the protocols are actually designed by them i am just an instructor about this course exam and other thing is controlled by the administrative part of this whole nptel system so uh, i cannot uh, you know kind of control these things so whatever structured and standardized protocols are there uh, that will be followed so probably you can ask uh, whoever is is there any person hmm? you can write a yeah you can write a mail to okay. support and ptl yes, yes. support and ptl is there any specific email id uh, just a minute ha uh, support you can just write support at nptl dot iitm iitm basically iit madras dot se dot in so so if you go to this nptl website you know so uh, there will be some contact us some kind of thing so there will be you know icon of contact us go to the nptel web page click on contact us and there you will find an email id called support at nptel.iitm.se.in you can just ask them uh, is it possible because it is they are the one who is kind of deciding all these protocols uh somebody with the name cool not so cool okay uh sir please tell the effect of stress as chronic migraine since last last 8 years uh, i am suffering from it if there is any way to manage it looking from stress management perspective um migraine may have many reasons again i mean these are medical areas so uh, i don't want don't want to comment too much on this thing one reason could be stress also i mean uh, there may be other reasons also of migraine and uh, uh, sometimes basically you know migraine becomes so deep in your system in your physiology you know that you know they are get stimulated and the headache be headache becomes you know your the pain becomes so unbearable uh, so many times you know uh, ap apart from taking medication if you slowly slowly learn to manage your stress Uh, probably the symptoms may lessen you know it it will it, it will decrease uh, so but if you keep accumulating the stress in the system also probably the migraine will remain for more time more longer time so slowly slowly you know use different strategies of stress management uh, they can be helpful because one of the reason of migraine could be stress also too much of stress can slowly slowly get accumulated in your system and they may can kind of express themselves in the symptoms of migraine also it is possible there may be other reasons also but stress could be one reason of migraine and uh, probably by managing stress slowly slowly you know you can uh, decrease the symptom uh, but you may need medication also uh, so probably you need to talk to your doctor also uh, because i am not an expert in those areas and uh, i cannot really comment in elaborately about migraine uh but the management of stress can definitely help in various disorders you know which are called psychosomatic disorders means uh, the disorders which are uh, or illnesses 
which has physical symptoms and but the causes may lie in the mind also mind you know so they are called psychosomatic symptoms are in the body but causes may be in your mind so migraine could be one such category of disease and illness so if you kind of slowly able to address your mental causes slowly slowly the symptoms at the in your body also kind of slowly slowly you know go away but it may not go go away overnight you need to kind of be motivated and you know do that so definitely it will be helpful i am sure about it but you know you need to talk to your doctor also because it is a medical problem uh how much time we are left with 6 okay so uh, uh another question that was posted in the actual last uh, session which i could not address um uh, somebody asked uh, i would like to hear from you that uh, how to apply psychological approaches in a daily life i am from psychology background student still eager to learn more how to approach every hassles and everyday life events in the psychological perspective sir is it possible to be always consciously approach that on that we are doing and uh, how we are facing in every situations which is happening around us so what i could understand from this question is that you know the uh, student is asking about how to use uh, psychological approach in daily life consciously uh, whatever we are doing in life uh, uh, doing various activities so again i mean again this is a question of multi dimensional question uh, again i cannot give you a simple answer to that uh, but uh, again you said no you are slowly slowly learning so this is the uh, the way to learn things you know like any discipline psychology also has various diverse applications diverse knowledge bases models and theories so slowly slowly learn about them uh, and apply them in your life a uh, lot of this thing concepts which are applicable in our life we are also discussing in this course so try to understand uh, the meaning and the concepts and try to apply them as much as possible in your life and see whether it is working or not uh, because uh, one of the thing is about psychology is that you no know, psychology most of the theories and models comes from the human beings only uh, it is not theoretical and the philosophical uh, ideas philosophers mostly you know talk about things mostly from the logical perspective you know even without really talking to anybody but the psychology is goes to the field talks to people collect data data is coming from the human beings only and that is how most of the theories and the models are coming up so as a result uh so most of these principles are coming from the human being so they should be applicable to our life at least to most of the but obviously there are individual differences uh some things may be more applicable to one person some things may not to work for other person that much that individual differences are possible uh, but i'm sure um, that you know such uh, you know uh, all this approaches has their own insights and benefits that can you know help you to understand about human mind and mechanisms so it is a long process learn apply and this is how things will work out so uh, another question mohan krishna is asking sir discuss exam stress management strategy uh see exam is just another 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 uh, you know situation you know uh all this strategy is not about specific situation it is about general strategies you know they can be applied to any situations including exam uh so stress is a reaction that happens when you encounter certain situation and if you remember the definition of stress we talked about stress mostly happens out of your interpretation process you know so you encounter a situation and then you think that uh, you know something is wrong or there is a danger or i will not be able to handle this situation so whenever this kind of interpretation happens stress is the natural outcome so it is not the situation that is causing stress how you are thinking about the situation that is most important 
So if you see that definition of stress, it is subjective. So that is why if you put five people in the same situation, one may be highly stressed, one may be may not be stressed at all, some one may be very less stressed. Why this all these differences? Because they are interpreting the situation in a very different way. So for any situation, one thing is obviously how do you interpret a situation. Second is what kind of skills and resources you have to deal with that situation. That will also influence your stress reaction. So for exam exa examination, the best way to deal with exam stress is that you get prepared about it. So if you think you are prepared, you know the content of your exam, naturally you will have very less stress. Why you get stressed about exam simply because you think uh, something may go wrong or I have not prepared well, I may not be able to score well. That is where all the stress is coming up. So the best thing is that simple solution is or most problem focused solution is that you know you prepare well for exam, stress will automatically go down uh, simply because your interpretation will change. Then you will not be a threat because then it you know you can you, you can handle uh, the situation. So so managing stress your mental thought processes are very important you know you need to look at your, at your mind sometimes these thought processes are very unconscious and automatic you may not even detect them you know triggers that those thoughts those thoughts automatically so for, so for example uh, the stress so probably you know probably you know that is one do we have time so it's almost so enthusiastically participating in the live session participating in the live session what to interact with you in oh, so looking forward to interact with you in that session